Hello YouTube, welcome back to the channel and today we're going to be unveiling a build that took almost six months to complete. So this build is for my little brother who is interested in upgrading from his current rig. So my brother was really budget conscious with this build so we wanted to keep it under 2k or around 2k so this build took a few months because we were slowly buying the parts over the months i also wanted to make the most out of this build because he does plan to do occasional gaming but most importantly he will be doing video editing with this rig so i figured why not go for thread ripper now in order to make that happen, we had to buy a mixture of used and new parts. Now with that said, let's go over the components used for this build. The Threadripper 1950X was AMD's flagship CPU when it was released in 2017. With 64 lanes of PCIe 3.0 and support for up to 128GB of RAM in quad channel mode, the CPU still offers incredible expansion capabilities. With 16 cores and 32 threads, this CPU is still very relevant today and will remain relevant for years to come for both content creation and gaming. Pairing with the 1950X is the ASUS X399 Zenith Extreme. The ASUS Zenith Extreme is one of the flagship motherboards for the first generation Threadripper CPUs. With a strong VRM setup and numerous I.O. capabilities, this motherboard has all of the modern amenities you need today. The motherboard is capable of supporting up to 32 cores with a 2990WX if you need the extra power. The DIMM.2 slot is a clever implementation by ASUS allowing you easy access to quickly install M.2 drives. Overall, the motherboard supports up to 3 M.2 drives and up to 4 graphics cards. This motherboard is upgraded with the optional SoC heatsink to keep the SoC VRMs cool over long, strenuous CPU tasks. Cooling the Threadripper 1950X is the NZXT X63 AIO. I am a huge fan of this AIO because of the fantastic Infinity Mirror and the performance it provides. With 280 millimeters in length for the radiator, there is more than enough headroom to cool the 16 core 1950X. To make this work with the Threadripper CPU, you must assemble the AIO with the bracket provided with the Threadripper CPUs. Powering this build for light gaming is the Radeon 5700. The GPU can be found for under $300 USD occasionally. In addition, this GPU is flashed with the 5700 XT BIOS, unlocking higher clocks for performance close to the 5700 XT. The 5700 is one of the best GPUs you can get for the price today, offering amazing performance for mid-range pricing. We are using 32GB of the Corsair Vengeance Pro RGB. We are opting for 4 sticks instead of 2 to enable quad channel mode. This does cost a little bit more than buying two sticks, however we want to get the most performance out of the CPU and the small increasing cost is more than worth it. For storage, we are using 1TB of the Samsung 970 EVO. This SSD will be used as storage for the OS and games. Should more storage be needed in the future, adding more storage is easy with the DIMM.2 slots. We are going with the Fantex AMP 650 watt PSU. 650 watts is within the sweet spot for this build and contrary to popular belief, you do not need to have a ton of power to run this build effectively. The sweet spot for most PSUs is within 50% power draw and the components we are using today is within that range under typical workloads. I chose this PSU because of the gold rated efficiency and the modular cable capability. A key feature is the two 8 pin power cables for both the CPU and GPU power. What is truly unique about this PSU is the hybrid mode that allows you to add on Fantex Revolt Pro PSU to add redundancy and more power if you need it. 
The Fantex Evolve X is Fantex's flagship case. This case offers numerous features such as tempered glass on both sides of the case, easy access for cable management, and incredible expansion opportunities to accommodate all sorts of builds. The one thing that stood out immediately was the port for water cooling. The key reason I went with this case is the support for the EATX motherboards, such as the Zenith Extreme we are using for this build. So let's go over how I would rate this PC. For reference, the CPU and GPU we are comparing this build to is the Threadripper 3970X for the CPU and the Titan RTX for the GPU. Other assumptions are for gaming, we are assuming maxed out settings for each respective resolution. For the video editing score, we are assuming there is no GPU acceleration, only CPU workload. This is just a disclaimer, this is only my opinion and my personal rating. Always do your research before making your purchase. Starting with 1080p gaming, the 5700 with the XT BIOS flash will provide an indistinguishable experience, so I rate this a 10 out of 10. For 1440p gaming, the GPU will provide a really good gaming experience, however, the Titan RTX will provide better averages and lows, so I rate this build a 8 out of 10. For 4K gaming, the 5700 is not a 4K gaming card and it will struggle with the 4K resolution, so I rate this a 5 out of 10. Moving on to the video editing, the 1950X is still a phenomenal CPU, and relative to the Threadripper 3970X, I rate this a 7 out of 10. For web browsing, this PC will handle that task easily, so I rate this a 10 out of 10. To summarize all of the scores, I will use this radar graph to show how this PC compares to the top GPU and CPUs today. This build stands out really well given the budget we were working with. All right, now that we went over the components, let's move on to the build montage.
Okay, before wrapping up, I wanna mention my building experience with this build. Overall, the experience was perfect. I did not run into issues building this computer. Everything works as expected. Now let's go over a few things that you may have in mind. So the first thing that might come to your mind is, how does the AIO cool the CPU? And I'm happy to say that it cools the CPU just fine. So through my one hour of testing with Prime95, the CPU did not break over 67 Celsius. And that's way below the thermal threshold for the CPU. So the second question that may come to your mind is how does the PSU handle the graphics card and the CPU? And from my experience, I did stress the CPU and the GPU at 100% and the PSU handled the power just fine. So overall, the PSU does deliver enough power for all the components for this build, even though it is only 650 watts. So there's one thing that I did do that you may consider doing in your build. So this motherboard does come with thermal probes and it does come with a header for thermal probes. So what I did is I routed the thermal probe through the exit of the fan. So it does capture the temperature of the heat coming in the case. So I did dial in and map the temperature probe based on the temperature within the case. So what this means is when the CPU is idling and is not putting out a lot of heat, the fans will be running at their minimum speed. And when it does start generating a lot of heat, the fans will ramp up. So as a result, this does cut down on a lot of dust buildup over time because the fans are not running at near maximum speed. And secondly, it does improve the user experience because the PC does remain silent, let's say when you're browsing the web or when you're watching a movie, that is when you do want it to remain silent. And the last thing I want to mention is this fantastic case. I cannot put in words how impressed I am with this case. Fantex does put in a lot of thought into this case and it does show as you are building in this case. So I just want to give a shout out to Fantex if they happen to stumble upon this video. You did a fantastic job with this case. And overall, I would say this is probably one of my most favorite cases of all time. And I would not hesitate to recommend this case to anyone who's willing to accept this ginormous size. All right, that just about wraps up this video. I just want to thank my brother for making this video a possibility. It was a pleasure to build this computer. This build was one of the longest running builds I've had, but it's also the most fun I've had in a long time. So if you like what you see today, please like this video and don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more content like this in the future. Thank you for watching and I catch you guys later.